Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Luna's Tale. We are here in Magicalism, our magical cataclysm, with Luna down in her basement, trying to sleep, or rather getting ready for sleep. Her first night since, well, making it up onto the surface, losing her grandfather, a lot's happened in a very short span of time. She has been getting better at magic though. At the end of the last we did learn two spells, Magical Light and Phase Door, two of which we can practice before we go to sleep, but there is another need that we have that we need to take care of before we try to sleep. You can see that our torso, our arm and our left leg is still quite injured. Just bruising mostly, but still bandaging them is going to make a difference and making makeshift bandages is going to make a difference for us. So we do need light though, and magical light could help us here. And as far as I'm aware, once a spell is level zero, we can get the experience necessary to get it to level one by successfully casting it once. And so we are going to try. It lasts for 16 minutes, which isn't bad. So let's try magical light and we fail that's okay we will try yet again magical light all right it's going to take a few attempts here luna but i'm sure we can get it we can see that it's a 44.4 percent fail chance we are getting a few failures in here and then finally bam just like that with the click of our fingers a magical light appears in front of us, hovering just in front of our face, and we've gained a level by doing so. And that means that phase door is probably going to work in a similar manner. So we have that working for us. Now, we need rags. Where can we get rags? Well, we do have a few items of clothing, rather some backup clothing. We do have a robe that we've managed to roll up into our backpack, which I would like to keep, ideally. And we also have our hoodie that we've damaged already. We should be able to cut that up. Yeah. You know what? We might not be able to. We don't have any cutting implements. We don't have any knives on us still. They must be all be upstairs. Yep, correct me if I'm wrong, but yet we do not have a cutting tool. And that we are going to need to be able to, yeah, do that properly. Well, that's a big pain. Going back up to the top is dangerous. However, we might not have any other choice than to put us back into that danger. Now, I think we might be able to activate this again. No, we can't do anything interesting with it. Hmm, I was wondering if we could turn it off and turn it on again. <laughs> but we don't seem to be able to do that. Can we drop the magical light? We can. We can just leave the magical light here. That's fantastic. I love that. Brilliant. And that means that we can just haul it around as well. So yeah, we, we can position this light wherever we want it to be. Which means that we might be able to use that as a distraction, although I believe that light doesn't actually attract zombies. It obviously just makes you easier to see. And so Luna, let's start sneaking, or getting down low, and we are going to try and pull this out the way. Okay, and we're going to peek back upstairs. Alright, so far so good. We seem to be okay, now we only need one blade, and there we go, we've got a blade. A butcher's knife down here. Let's grab it, and let's make our way back down. Or maybe we could peek into here and try and grab some extra clothing. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? So far so good. This is Luna's old room, and what do we have? Okay. We can take some of that with us. I'd actually like to take a whole heap of that. In actual fact, we'll take that. The gloves, the socks. We'll, we'll take the whole lot if we can. Okay. And let's make our way back down. <sighs> well, that actually went a lot better than I was anticipating. Oh, right. We're in minimal pain after straining ourselves by lifting that bookcase there. Okay. Closed on up. Right, let's go grab this magical light once again, and we'll drop down some of these extra items. I do want to hold on to the robe, however. <laughs> Is there anything else that's been damaged? I mean, our jeans have been damaged. We could just try and keep the denim shorts just in case. Yeah. Alright, we'll go with that for now. And let's get 
slicing. We are going to cut up everything. Yep. And there we go. We actually did manage to get some rags out of that. Ten rags, actual fact, which is great. So let's jump into our crafting menu here, and we're going to try and make some bandages. Some makeshift bandages. Excellent. One of twelve rags, nine seconds for us to make them. So let's say, let's make eight for now. Spend a minute doing that. Okay, we have eight makeshift bandages. Fantastic. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and apply that to our torso. We can see the expected quality is very poor. So <laughs> it's really not that great. But it will be better than having nothing on there at all. And I think we are going to want to do our leg. And this will help with the healing process. Yeah, just making sure that nothing else gets into it. No troubles. Good. <laughs> the next thing that I would love, absolutely love, would be uh, just a simple uh, needle and thread. We don't have any thread right now. But yeah, a tailor's cat would be ideal, but you know, here we are. And so, with that, I think we will probably try to go to sleep. We could take some more aspirin, just to get rid of that minimal pain. We're not tired yet though, that's the only thing. And that's got me thinking, maybe it is worth us trying to cast this other spell of ours. It is teleportation magic, so it is dangerous. But, I don't think this is going to move us very far. Range 3, Variant 2. Okay, I feel like that should be safe enough for us to try and cast down here. Let's try. Phase door. We need our hands free. Of course, we have the makeshift bandages in our hand at the moment. Let's just go ahead and put those back into our pack. Okay, there we go. Dropped. And trying. Phase door. All right, not yet. And there we go. Just like that, we close our palms together, whisper an arcane phrase under our breath, and something clicks in our mind. We see a way through, through the air, from one place to another. And we have just cast Phase Door, which is kind of a little bit like Misty Step, I suppose. And so that might be able to get us out of some very sticky situations. We will need to get a lot better at casting that spell because you really don't want to be failing it because it still is going to take, you know, at least a move in which you could be moving or attacking. So, yeah, we're definitely going to want to try and improve on that. Get that failure chance down by a whole heap. And we can improve on that by practicing or by reading. And honestly, reading's probably going to be safer for us. And speaking of reading... We can just read here. That is totally something that we can do. And what do we want to try to improve first of all? Hmm. Well, I think Magic Missile we are going to be getting up naturally. It is going to be our main damage type. Honestly, I think getting Phase Door a little bit higher will be better for us. So, let's go ahead and start to read. We're not going to be able to get 30 minutes. We'll be able to get a little while, until of course the light goes out. And so we did manage to get a little bit of studying done there. So let's just try magical light and bam, just like that. Nice and light. Good, good, good. Okay, let's start reading once again for half an hour. And effectively what I'm going to be doing is just repeating this process until we get to maybe about 12.30, 1 o'clock, and then sleeping then. So once Luna is ready for sleep, we will rejoin her. But until then, I will see you soon. Okay, well, we've gotten to nearly midnight and we have just started getting tired. And we can see that our spellcraft has increased to three. Excellent. We didn't get a level in phase door yet, but it's a damn good start. So, with that, I think we are going to try and sleep the night away. I really, really hope that we're going to be okay here. I'm almost tempted to try and move another bookcase over, but I feel like that might be too much. So for now, we are going to lay down here with these rags beneath us and try and sleep. Yes. And just like that, boom, we are asleep right away and thankfully our wounds are starting to heal overnight and so luna we shall see you in the morning ah and just like that we have completed another achievement the first day of the rest of their unlives survive for a day and find a safe place to sleep 
and is triggered by waking up, which I guess means that we have awoken. Now, our torso is still rather injured. Ideally, we would have some kind of antiseptic to be able to help treat that. It does also mean that we just need to take things very, very cautiously today. So to start things off, we're going to walk over to this little pile of things that we have here. Yeah, it's our food, and some of that is going to be no good. We're going to start off by just drinking the milk, because it does have some calories, but it's also going to quench us at the same time. So we will just throw that back. We're nice and satisfied now. And let's have some of this lemon-lime soda as well. See if we can get ourselves quenched. Not yet, but we're full. <laughs> so that's probably all that we're going to need to eat for now. We're actually feeling sluggish after that. There we go. Slate and satisfied. And our torso is looking good as well. Fantastic. That's really, really good. So with that, we need to plan out our day. I have some goals today. We want to try and get some specific things. Namely, a tailoring kit would be amazing. Look at our jeans. They are barely holding themselves together right now. We're probably going to have to drop off our other books here, just so that we don't lose them. If our bag tears, those, they're gone. Simple as that. We could swap out to the denim shorts now. They're not going to be as protective, but they're also not going to fall apart. They don't fit us as well, so they're going to be a little bit encumbering. You know what? I think that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to accomplish here is unloading our jeans, just putting them into our backpack. And we'll go ahead and drop the old jeans down here, and we'll just wear the denim shorts for now. Yeah, nowhere near as protective, unfortunately. But it's not having that much of an effect on our legs, so I think we're going to be okay. All right, let's get that cudgel in our hand, just in case there's anything immediately in front of us when we make our way up and uh, try as best we can to move the bookcase. We didn't strain ourselves there. We're going to stay sneaking like this as well, because it is going to be the safest way for us to move around. We are still rocking that balaclava because it's a little chilly out. Okay. Honestly, I think moving out the back here is going to be... Uh, this, the safest way for us to get about. Military rucksack. It's good if we could clean it. We need to make ourselves a washboard, among other things. Some more destruction out the back here, from what we can see. Vegetable cleaver. And you know what? We're going to go and grab this string while we're here. Yeah. And I believe there's something else in the fire. Yes, a thermos. It can contain a litre of liquid, and it can keep things hot or cold, so I like the sounds of that. We'll be making use of that, no doubt. Wizard Tower. I do want to make it further into there, but uh, the kind of more that I'm thinking about it, we might do better just by trying to make our way into these other homes first, because... Uh, it's very dangerous in there, and now that we have a stone golem wandering around the town, I feel like it's better just to leave it to do its thing. We're not immediately seeing that decayed zombie. No, we do have some dead that I would very much like to bash so they don't come back. We're going to stay sneaking, just staying low to the ground. The decayed zombie hasn't seen us yet, I think. And we'll try and get up towards the corner of our home so we can have a little bit of a spy. Peeking around the corner, again, not immediately seeing anything. Because we are low. Hiding behind the bush, peeking out. Okay. This is looking promising. We've got a lot of dead zombies around here. We can take that. We can run with that. And I think we'll have to try and run across the road. We're actually going to get closer to the water here, closer towards where this decayed zombie is, and I believe it has seen us. And so with that, let's go and put this cudgel back into our backpack. Yeah, store in the hiking bag. And we're going to get ready to try and slam this sucker with magic missile. Okay, so I can't remember the exact range, but I feel like you must be getting closer, huh? Yep, you are definitely within range, so let's go ahead and fail at casting. There we go. Nice. And six damage. It is certainly getting better. All right. And with each shot, we gain more experience. 
And so we'll just keep on going through these rapid strikes with our magic missile. Occasionally failing, but we did not fail there. Grab that cudgel back out. And the reason why I'm getting the cudgel out right away is just so that we have an implement to smash with, but also so that uh, if anything sneaks up on us, like a dog that I don't notice, we shouldn't have as, you know, difficult of a time. Let's go ahead and smash your corpse. US Weekly and the Menden Restaurant Guide. Well, Menden's a very small town. <laughs> I don't think we're going to learn of anything else in here. Um, can we activate the Restaurant Guide just to see? Yes, we can. And uh, it's taking a second. Added roads and restaurants to our map. Now, there might be others. Okay, yeah, no. I don't believe we had these before. Tewksbury, Summerworth. We've got the Morrow Plantation down there. Okay, which is a familiar name from uh, Dust's area, but uh, obviously names are recycled. But it's good to know that uh, we aren't completely alone. Tuxbury seems to be a little bit closer. Summerworth and Somerville. Okay. Well, let's uh, leave that map on the ground for now and try and make our way over towards this corpse. Dead. Lovely. Nothing on you. Okay. Oh boy. That's that zombie cop. <laughs> Let's just uh, keep wandering and bashing as we go. There's a messenger bag there. Okay. Nice thermal shirt. The dog is dead. Pipe fittings. Good if we want to make a sink. Okay. Let's move on towards these others here. Something is either in here or bashed out of here. Okay, smash you and you, and we will check those bodies as well. This is grim work. Combat boots, tactical gloves, they all sound nice. And a fur bikini top, that's a really interesting SWAT zombie that we have here. Very interesting. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, we've got a cell phone here with a little bit of uh, battery life left on it. We'll take it, sure. And the potato chips, which are frozen. The heroin, we're probably not going to touch. Yeah, I think we can get by without that for now. We probably also don't need to have this um, laptop computer in our backpack anymore because that's what was giving us the time of day, I believe. Yep, let's keep moving. And the way I kind of see uh, Luna dealing with the dead here is just kind of smashing into the head as best she can with the cudgel and, um, yeah, try to do as much damage to joints. These creatures seem to be incredibly resilient, so if they have the ability to come back again, we need to make sure that they are limited in their mobility. And we do have a kid over there, I think. Yeah. Two of them. We'll leave them be, Luna. Let's see if this door is open. It isn't, but we can open the garage here. Mechanical winch is open, and we have a solar vehicle inside, and some very nice tools, binoculars among them. Now, because of Luna's uh, negative trait that we have, Wayfarer over here, it means that vehicles are completely off limits to us. So, as tempting as it would be to drive away from town, that's not something that we'll be doing. We will, however, grab these matches right away because, well, we are a fire starter after all. We've got some thread now, so that's great. A flare as well. <laughs> Lovely. Alright, well, the binoculars are going to help us see all the more farther, and because of that we can actually... I suppose we can see movement in the trees. There is a small horde out there. Let's be very mindful of that, and oh boy, we've got a zombie already who has seen us and is probably going to come straight towards this window. So, let's see if we can hit him off, if we can. Ideally, we don't want this window to break. So let's open it up and hope that he decides to walk in. Whether or not that's going to be the case, I suppose we'll see. Um, we could try and blast him, but I think using the cudgel here is going to be better for us. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so... A good quick strike. Okay, and our melee skill has increased to two. We are going to stay here for now because he is in a much slower position and now he's stunned. Fantastic. Keep on striking. 
Come on, Luna. We've been grabbed. <sighs> but with that last strike, we managed to kill it. Let's close the window. Let's smash that corpse into pieces. Again, this is one that's naked. Its clothes have kind of almost fallen off its body. It's what happens when they come back, but yeah. <laughs> okay, hacksaw. Do we have a hacksaw yet? We don't. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab you, put you into our backpack, and I believe that's a bloody scythe. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it is incredibly awkward to use for anything but its intended purpose. So, using a scythe as a weapon, is, it's so difficult. We can see the two hit is minus six. It's an incredibly unruly weapon. Uh, let's go and close this for now. It can't be closed? Oh. Okay, interesting. Guess we'll have to go with that. Detergent, we will take it because I think we'll be able to use it when it comes to cleaning some equipment eventually. Speaking of cleaning, looks like we've got some things inside of here. Um, let's just go sneaking for now. Stay nice and low. Stay nice and low in this home. What do we have? A wool scarf? What scarf do we have at the moment? Is it wool? It is a knit scarf. Well, having some extra wool is going to be okay, and that was a weird little breathing glitch there. Look at that, we've got some shorts. These actually fit, although I feel like the denim ones are going to offer us a little bit more protection. Really, the denim is just a stopgap for now. I'm hoping we will find something better in here today. What do we have? A kitty bowl and spoon, which means that those kids outside probably lived here. Oh, no, we don't want to open, we want to be closing. Making our way into the kitchen. Okay, two hammers. A pair of scissors, which we don't have yet, I think. Yeah, so scissors, I will definitely take you. A battery charger. Hmm. It could be easily wired into a vehicle. Okay, so that's not going to work for us. However, the duct tape will. The long screws are also useful. And I think that's all that we're going to be able to make use of here. The X-Acto knife is a small tool for us to keep. It's got cutting and fine cutting. Which is better than what the scissors can do, actually. <laughs> yeah, let's keep the X-Acto knife then. Sure. Alright, we've already got a hammer, so we're okay in that uh, regard. And we have, uh, we have more knives. We were comparing knives quite a bit in the last. As to what was going to be the best for us, but I think we're okay for now. A steel frying pan is a damn good tool. I know we've got a kettle in our pack at the moment, but we'll go ahead and put one of those in there as well for now. We can afford to do it, we have the space. We'll leave the rest of those tools here, and under here we have ourselves scrub brushes. All right, detergent and some rags, excellent. I don't think we're gonna need too much detergent. The bleach, ammonia, all the rest that can stay. The sponge I will take, just in case it is something that we need for the washboard now. I know that some of the requirements for crafting change over time. And, ah, excellent. We have ourselves some coffee and tea as well. Okay, let's take the cardboard box. We do have some plastic bags of tea leaves. Hmm, a coffee maker and some instant coffee mix. I think we're gonna stick to tea for now. I feel like Luna is more of a tea person than a coffee person. And oh boy, we've got a whole heap of frozen food in here. A lot of birds, eggs. This is just a lot of food in general. This is good. It's not a bad find, but it also is something that we don't need to specifically take from this house. What we can do though, is on Luna's little hand-drawn map that she has. Interesting. Is this just classed as being the same house? It might be. We're gonna put a note here and just say, food in fridge. There we go. And so we know if we need it, there is extra food here. Staying low to the ground, let's check out the shelves. Nothing here. And so then the rest of the place. We've got ourselves a nice hoodie in good condition. Actually, it's a raincoat. Yeah, let's take it. We'll need something like that eventually. And over here we have copper wire. It's not gonna take up too much space. Sure. We don't know if we're going to need it yet. And what's this? A nice hat? 
a backpack too, and a sleeveless duster. Now that is useful. It has plenty of pockets. We could make this fit us. Let's take it. Yeah, Fedora and the rest, that can stay behind for now. Ooh, interesting. We got ourselves a closed metal door here, one that we can't open easily. What do we have stashed away in there? What indeed? Well, the bathroom could be useful. And that it is, some heartburn medicine, some tramadol, nice. Curling lines and all the rest, we can do without them. And some floss, it looks like, and soap, lovely. Okay. Well, upstairs then, I suppose. And this could be potentially leading into a basement, but the fact that there is a door here, like a metal door that we don't seem to be able to open, just right behind a regular door, that's intriguing to me. Hmm. We start off by peeking upstairs. We're not immediately being grabbed, so that's a good sign. We'll just cautiously make our way around, sneaking as we do. We should be relatively quiet while we are sneaking. We're making zero sound right now. Football armor. Now we are talking. <laughs> well, it's pretty post-apocalyptic. And it's certainly seeming apocalyptic right now. Uh, oh boy. Okay, well... How much is this going to give us in terms of protection? A fair amount. Uh, it will also encumber us, however. We can fit it into our pack without it being too much trouble. The weight is starting to get to be a little bit much, but that's, uh, that's good. I will take that for now. All right, what do we got? Two more sponges, some more soap, lovely. Over here underneath the sink, aspirin. The cough syrup, yes, multivitamin. And some more soap, yeah, sure. Soap is going to be very useful when it comes to cleaning dirty, dead people clothes. Which is something that we're going to have to do eventually. Yeah. I don't think we've missed anything else in this bathroom. It's very useful, and that is a incredibly long bath. Not bad. Okay, what do we have in here? A fur scarf? We've got some jeans. Fantastic. This is good. Excellent. Anything else that we're going to want to take? The sheath? Definitely. Yup. And I think we'll take the sports bra as well. Let's go ahead and chuck the sheath on for now. And I believe we're going to be able to sheath the butcher's knife. Oh, let's select you first of all. There we go. And that way, if we do need to activate it, we can just activate the sheath and bring it out that way. I am going to just change this so that it's S. So we can activate it nice and easy and bring it out that way. And the butcher's knife, we're also going to go and select and make that so it is B. Yeah, there we go. All right. We should be able to butcher straight from the pack there. Okay. Hmm. I think we're going to do a swap over now. So let's go ahead and drop the denim shorts. Ah, they are carrying items. I think I can get those to just go out. Yeah try as we might. Denim shorts, we are going to unload you. It's all into our main inventory now. And we'll go ahead and wear the regular jeans instead. Go ahead and put them on. The kilt is an option, but the jeans are going to give us better protection overall. And I think, for sake of comfort, we're going to go ahead and swap out to the sports bra. And let's just make sure that everything is layered properly here. It is. Good. So we do have that windbreaker. Not sure what's going to be better, the windbreaker or the, uh, the raincoat. We can have a look at that once we get back home. For now, though, I feel like we have grabbed everything we can, bar a soldering iron. Still very, very useful. And while I think Luda does feel somewhat strange taking from the people that she has lived around she never really got the chance to know any of them properly and it does seem that this house indeed is joined so it looks like two properties on the map but it is just the one okay what do we have in here well we do have a interesting magazine sure why not we might need it after all it is the end of the world and in these two drawers, we've got a whole heap of equipment. There's even a wedding ring in there. Maybe we could barter it if we need to. But then again, there is something about taking that that doesn't quite sit right. 
And so having a look at the rest of the equipment here, I am going to go through this all and pick out things that I think might be useful. Yeah, eclipse glasses, that's kind of great. <laughs> we deal with a lot of fire and bright light. Who knows, might come in handy. So yes, I will go through all of this here, find out what might actually be useful to us, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we do have a few items here that are going to be of use to us. So let's see, what do we have on the ground? Well, there is a rolled sleeping bag, definitely useful. The leather skirt and leather belt, they're going to be more for, uh, you know, just our general use. We actually don't have a belt on at the moment, so we are going to just wear the leather belt. But the leather skirt, we're probably going to uh, cut up. Ooh. Okay, our torso is very hampered at the moment though, so that's something that we need to consider. I am probably wearing maybe a little bit too much at this stage. Jumping in, having a look at our torso, let's just see if we can do anything about that. Uh, yeah. We probably don't have to have the windbreaker on at the moment. It is certainly helping. Uh, and I am actually wanting to wear another layer underneath of there, which is this thermal electric outfit. It's going to cover everything. It's going to give us basic protection, but more importantly, it's going to keep us warm. And so now our torso is, yeah, really not having a good time. So having a look at this, it is the bra that we're going to have to remove for now. Well, I guess we will be leaving that behind then. So we'll go ahead and just drop that on the side. Because, uh, yeah, that thermal electric outfit is going to be very, very useful. We can charge that up and it's going to keep us nice and warm. I think even just as it is, it should be keeping us at least somewhat warm. Warmth 10, yeah. And I think it will produce more warmth once we actually do fill that with a battery. Yeah. And it's covering everything. The head, mouth, torso, arms, hands, feet, legs. Now, I hope it's not impeding our hands because they're not gloves. So I think we should be okay. What we are going to have to do is take off a few other items of clothing, probably. Yeah, so the balaclava, all the rest, we're going to have to go ahead and take off because it's just, it is covering pretty much everything. Okay, so balaclava, the rest of our underwear, the socks. Is that it? I think so. The knit scarf might actually be a little bit too much at this stage now because that's also covering our mouth. So yeah, taking a fair bit off. We still have balaclava on? No, we don't. So what is covering our mouth then? Oh, it must be the thermal electric outfit. If I had to guess, yes, yes it is. Okay, so our torso is still, you know, more than a little encumbered. So let's have a look at that windbreaker of ours. I think we might need to take that off. And that means trying to fit more things into our backpack, which, you know, it might not be able to. Let's see if that's going to be possible. Let's go unload. Okay, well, we haven't dropped anything yet, so that's a good sign. And that means that we should be able to drop that windbreaker. Okay, how are we looking now, Torso? That's a lot better. That I think we can work with for now. We will have to try and pick up a few other bits and pieces. Namely, these sunglasses, which we can actually wear right away. I went for them over the Eclipse glasses because the Eclipse ones are just going to be a little bit too much, I think. Yeah, <laughs> way too much, in fact. And so with that, what else are we going to grab? We'll take the skirt because we're going to cut that up into pieces. We'll take the whistle as well because, well, if we do need to uh, attract a whole heap of dead to us, that's one way to do it. And that is potentially a strategy that we'll use try to bring them to one end of the town and then you know zip away yeah all right and before we leave the rest of this equipment behind i do want to do a quick comparison between the windbreaker and where are you clothing the raincoat that we have here so it looks like we get a little bit better protection from the raincoat it doesn't have as much uh carrying capacity the windbreaker does have less encumbrance overall as well. You know what? I think we're going to keep that instead. So, for now, raincoat, we're going to be saying goodbye to you. You can go for now, and the windbreaker we will keep. Nice. Let me have one last drawer to check out in this place. We'll leave the rest of that stuff behind, and we've just got some aspirin in there. Good. Well, I feel like this place has been a pretty decent haul. There is another sleeping bag in here as well, and a whole ass ski jacket, but the ski jacket's maybe a little bit too severe. 
we might need it eventually when winter comes, but uh, yeah, I think we'll probably revisit things once uh, we have cold like that, and who knows, by the time winter rolls around, we probably won't be in this town. Yes. Well, that's successful. Surprisingly so. With that, we can probably mark these two houses as explored for now. Looking at the rest of the town, we have a botanical garden, two houses out in the woods, a public garden, another house here, and uh, the fast food restaurant. We did spend a little bit of time in this house down here, but um, yeah, what I'm thinking we're going to need to do is actually just make ourselves a wooden needle. Pretty basic, something that we should be able to accomplish. Let's see if we can. No, we can't. It's gonna be too, it's gonna be too complex. Yep, we do not have the ability to do that. We might, however, be able to. We do have a book back at home called Birdhouse Monthly. And we also have a zombie, nice and close. Well, we are gonna have to deal with you first. Yes, we are. Okay, and I think because of the position we're in at the moment, I am actually gonna to wanna to try and magic missile you instead. So, let's go ahead and put this back into our pack, huh? So let's go to the cudgel. We are going to uh, store you back in that hiking backpack of ours. And we're gonna have a look at casting magic missile at our friend outside of the door here. And we'll zoom out so we can have a better look at this as we fire away, <laughs> trying to, failing quite a few times, but we do get a cast off there. That's good. And as you can see, it's not a massive amount of damage, but it's our bread and butter as a magician, as a wizard, casting these arcane bolts as he starts to make his way through the window. It is nearly dead, and I think we're gonna be able to get it if we keep on trying. Okay, still in the window, that's good. A few more successes here. There we go. Killed with magic missile as bolts of arcane energy extend from Luna's fingers. Okay, well, as always, let's start sneaking as soon as we get outside here. And we are seeing another zombie pretty much right away. Where are we seeing you? Over to the east. Ah, we can actually see you in... Uh, <laughs> over here and you are you are seeing us right away okay well I guess we'll I guess we'll go with that let's stomp on the head of this one here okay and uh, we're gonna have to prepare for this other one to make its way over towards us we're gonna stand up and um, yeah we're gonna go for the full range on this if we can we're okay <laughs> there all right so stop casting the spell yes that's fine We'll let them get a little bit closer to us, and I think once they make it to here, that is good. We're going to start casting away, and we will be backing up as it gets closer towards us. But this is the perfect opportunity for us to practice casting, as we are getting it more damaged with each strike. Our mana is starting to drop, but it's not so low that I am concerned yet. Oh, and just as it gets closer to us, we kill the thing. I will take that, and we will actually take the RPG die here as well, and the multi-tool. That's amazing. That's That can do a whole heap of things for us. So if we ever do need to condense our inventory down, we have the option to do that. I think the best move for us to do right now will be to make our way back over towards our home. Honestly, I don't even think staying low is going to make a difference here, but it's making a difference to Luna. <laughs> There we go. The door is locked. Our front door is locked. Of course it is. Well, I think it's probably going to be best for us to unlock that. Yeah. So awesome monthly. I'm not sure if we have that yet or not. We'll take it. It is just a magazine, but it could give us the kind of basic tailoring skill we need. Oh boy. A zombie child. And I think it has seen us as well. No, it hasn't. Okay, that's good. Let's keep it that way. Let's just go up towards our front door and unlock it so that we can come back in that way in the future. We are going to make our way downstairs for now. Back to some form of safety. Good. And back to food as well. Now, we do have that vegetable pizza still, I think, in our inventory. Let's see, do we, do we, do we? We do, fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and munch on that. Lovely, satisfied and hydrated from that one pizza. 
Love it. Love it. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to go through our equipment that we have. We don't need to keep all of these things on us, the cast iron pot and all the rest. I'm going to try and separate them as best I can down here, maybe using some of the desks in the other room. Once we're organized, we're going to plan our next part of the day. Okay, so believe it or not, we are relatively organized in this little space here. Luna has dragged some of the desks around. So down here, we have most of our tools. We have spare parts and some other bits and pieces over here, along with some of our magazines. Uh, all of our books are up here in this little book pace, and our clothing is out here on the desk. And so what we are going to want to try and do first is just get a needle. A needle and thread. That's all we need to try and repair this hiking backpack and any of the other equipment that we have. And so I think we are going to be starting with So Awesome Monthly. So let's go ahead and cast ourselves some magical light. Or try to. There we go. Right in front of our face. Some magical light. And we are going to start reading So Awesome Monthly monthly hoping that this is going to help us here it's going to increase our tailoring skill to one which is good we don't have any skill in tailoring i believe we can see our crafting skill there yep no we've got some skill in fabrication we actually have 86 percent in tailoring so i think we will be able to get up there pretty quickly so let's start reading and we will read until we get to level one or until our light goes out and we will just be using our magical light we do have other light sources but um, yeah, it gives us a chance to improve it over time just naturally as well. Better and better. And so I will see you once we have learnt that first level. Oh boy, I didn't realize we actually ran out of mana there. So casting magical light obviously does take mana. I didn't realize it was taking 500 mana, which is a fair amount. So we can run out of it pretty quickly. And sure enough, we we have run out of that so i guess for now we are just gonna have to rely on our flashlight which is a much more efficient source of light yeah <laughs> well you know what let's let's save the flashlight what will actually help us here is the laptop the laptop is a much slower and lower use of um that kind of power we can play games on it as well if we want to but for now we will just focus on that tailoring and bam we have tailoring one and there are a number of uh, different recipes that we can learn in there i'm hoping now that we will be able to make ourselves a needle no we still can't wooden needle i think it might even be under survival quite possibly yeah it's been a while since I've done the very base beginning. And generally, you can usually find tailoring kits and needles easily enough. But uh, right now, we seem to be struggling to find that. So I will read through the rest of these kind of basic magazines here, just so we can start to get a general understanding of these different skills. And bam, we have learned fabrication little one from Birdhouse Monthly. We're very hungry at the same time, so let's just go ahead and snack on some potato chips for now. Lovely, that's done. And we'll go ahead and wash that down with some milk. We're nice and slaked now too. Excellent. And it would seem that fabrication is what we were missing to make ourselves a wooden needle. It's going to take 20 minutes for us to carve it because, um, well, we're not that great at carving yet. We are going to need some splintered wood, however. Now we do have wood up the top, so let's go ahead and grab it. We are gonna have to turn off that laptop computer first though. I think that's not a problem for us. We'll make our way up to the top and uh, let's just try sneaking for now if we can. I would desperately like to get the zombie out of our house, but at the same time, I don't want to antagonize this zombie child who we have seen and is in our kitchen. That's just, it's too close. We're gonna have to do something about that. We can't avoid them forever. All right, Luna. We're gonna have to go for this kid. So, making her way around out into the lounge, the child locks its eyes on Luna. Luna extends her hand out, shaking, knowing what she must do. Let's cast that magic missile. We've got some mana back. We'll make the most of it. And our first strike hits its mark. We hear a thump. It was a different kind of thump. Where was that thump from? 
I'm actually not sure. Yeah, I think I think that 13 sound is coming from magic missile. So it is noisy. And with that last bolt of arcane energy making its way across into the kitchen, the child falls flat to the ground. Now I'm intrigued. Usually, we feel remorse. We don't, but we are craving fire. Well, Luna, we can give you that. Maybe killing them remotely like that doesn't affect them the same way. Usually mechanically, in Cataclysm, um, the child zombies are a problem because, well, they make you feel remorse because they seem so close to a child. That tough zombie is very injured, and I think we have another one, ah, another child, also very injured. Let's go ahead and lower ourselves down for now. We're going to have to grab this kid. Yup. Hey. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Unfortunately, we just punched the counter. I do kind of feel like that fits a little bit, though. And we'll grab this other zombie here. Look at that. Splintered wood. It's exactly what we need. Well, while we're here, let's go ahead and grab it. And we're going to make our way out towards the fire. And we will take some of these planks with us. Sure. Making our way down towards the fire pit. Let's get a lighting. Now, we don't have much left in these lighters, so we'll do what we can. We happily light a fire. Yeah. As happy as we can be, I suppose. There we go. Lit a fire. We've been enjoying reading those magazines. We could stay out here to craft, but... I don't feel that confident. So let's make our way quickly back towards the home, climb through the window, and make our way back downstairs. Yup, down we go. And I think we should get used to grabbing this and putting it in front. Just having that little extra layer of protection is going to be very good for us. Okay, let's fire up that laptop yet again, get that screen going for us, and we are going to jump in and try and craft ourselves a wooden needle. Okay, all right, let's not fail. We've got enough splintered wood. It's just really time, as always. It's past midday now, and we were successful. We have ourselves a wooden needle. Excellent, we will take you. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna go ahead and quickly change you over to A, just so you're nice and easy to activate because we're gonna be activating you a whole heap. Let's go get you loaded with some thread because I believe we do have some. Reload, okay. We've got some thread. We should be able to do some repairs. The hiking backpack might be made of things other than just rags, but we do have a few rags, so it's gonna be worth a try. The other thing that we need to consider is that our tailoring skill really isn't that good, so we might end up damaging this thing more. We're gonna go ahead and activate our needle, first of all, and let's go across to the backpack. Um, right, leather patches. Well, I suppose we're gonna have to grab that leather skirt off the desk then to try and see if we can disassemble it or cut it into pieces. Let's see, can we disassemble you? Doesn't look like we can. We can drop you though, and then we'll go ahead and cut that up where we don't salvage a patch from it. And that's kind of because we aren't very good at tailoring yet as well. Given enough time and enough attempts, we might be successful there. Yeah. Well, the hiking backpack isn't too damaged, so I suppose that's okay. We should be able to work with that. All right. Well then, I suppose we're done down here for now. We could try and read through some of the other books for the time being, just get a little bit of a basic understanding of them, but um, we should pass them by. Hmm. Or we could read. We could just read and read and read. You know what? I think that's probably the safer and the better option for us to take right now. We can wait until the evening and try and do some nighttime exploration. I feel like that's going to be better. And so, Luna, let's study that magic. Well, it is now time for dinner. We've been doing a fair amount of studying. You'll see that phase door is now level three. We only have a 25% chance to fail. We can also see that the range is three and the variance is three. 
we do still need to do a little bit more study. There isn't that much more to study though to the next level. 2347. That's not too bad. It is taking a little bit more each time, obviously, but uh, here we are. It does require a hundred mana, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, I didn't, I guess I didn't see with Magical Light that it required so much mana. It is, it is, yeah, that's a lot of mana. It's a whole heap. So I think we'll really want to try and get this to last as long as possible. So doing some magical light studies is going to be the next thing that we study. But first of all comes dinner. What do we want to have? Honestly, it's probably going to be trying to use these resources that are going to go off sooner rather than later. And so let's go ahead and just throw back that milk for now. <laughs> it starts us off. We'll probably not eat the yogurt because it's mushy. We will have some of the luncheon meat just as it is. And we'll have some lemon light soda if we can nice oh we lost vegetarian as that i believe was the first meat that we've eaten but luna isn't a vegetarian that would make things even harder so for now we're going to read on oh dear we shiver a fire would be nice right now but more importantly we are hearing wumps and so we're going to stop as to where those wumps are coming from we're hearing it from here, which means that there could be something behind the bookcase right now. Okay, Luna, let's go ahead and activate this laptop computer. Close it. We're very hungry, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. We hear Wump. And I don't think we're hearing it from above. I think we're hearing it from in here. And so we need to be ready to just attack very quickly. Let's get that cudgel in our hand. And I think we are going to have to try and pull this thing back. It feels really heavy. Oh boy, this is difficult to pull. Okay, we need to be careful about this. I think we're going to want to try and grab it from here. Put it back. Oh, damn. Yes, indeed, it was heavy. And as we pull this thing back in perfect horror movie style, a zombie tears through the bookcase, smashing it into pieces. As it grabs a hold of Luna, drawing her towards itself, it bites down on our head. Luckily, no wounds, but still bruising. Okay, all right, we're gonna go ahead and smash at this thing. Luckily, hitting it in the head, we stun it, precisely striking it for 20 damage. Again, another stun. We're getting better with this cudgel. Strike after strike finds its mark, but we are off balance now. Ooh, okay, we managed to throw it back slightly. And just like that, with another strike, the creature is dead. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> where, oh, where did you come from? And this, of course, is why we use these bookcases. It's an early warning system. However, because we aren't the strongest, it's generally going to mean that they are going to get destroyed. Yeah. Well, we're craving fire yet again. I think we're going to have to take this thing upstairs. Along with some of the other bits and pieces that are on the ground. Let's hope that there isn't a whole heap upstairs now. We'll go ahead and just peek for now. We seem to be okay. All right, we drag the corpse upstairs with us, making our way outside to our fire pit. We can see to the northwest a zombie out there, just wandering around. Okay, and we've spotted yet another, two of them in fact. Let's go ahead and stop dragging things for now. We aren't hauling the items, I think we've left them behind us. Okay, where are they? It's a child and a regular zombie, okay. We need to get this out of our home, so we are going to keep on dragging for now. I don't think they can see us, though. We're going to be a lot slower moving like this, and we've actually stopped hauling. Let's ignore for now. How close. Well, when we light the fire, I think they're going to see us regardless. Okay. Stop. Yes. Alright, we're still okay for now. Let's go back, haul them a little further, stop moving those items, we're going to ignore. I think now it might be aware of us, no, not yet, okay. Just bit by bit we move closer to the fire pit, and at this stage we're actually just going to go ahead and move them. So move that corpse, move that, there's a diamond ring stashed in here. We need something more to help uh, burn this thing. We are going to need something else to make this burn though. So, 
Let's go grab these planks. Even one, I think, should be enough, and, well, that's all that we got. Let's go ahead and put our cudgel away for now. Drop that plank into there. And then we're going to start the fire. Using the last of this lighter. Ignore. And here we go. We have trouble. Alright, let's go ahead and get that cudgel back out of our backpack because I think the other zombie is going to come straight for us. And sure enough, it is. It's destroying the fence. Come on. I don't think we're going to be able to get you to step into the fire, but we can certainly try. Don't you break my brazier. Okay, a good strike. Okay, we've been grabbed. Keep it up, Luna. Okay, a strike on our arm. It was a bite, but it didn't entirely get through. And with that one dead, we're going to go ahead and roll its body directly into the fire. A child is still out there. Ah, oh, rather, <laughs> we're going to miss. I think it was distraction from the child, yes. But we'll try yet again, and there we go. Let's sneak back. The kid is still there, but the kid can't see us. And so back inside for now. Away. It circles around the fire as it continues to burn. Oh, come on. All right. Well... We gotta do what we gotta do. We're gonna go ahead and put that back into our bag. We're gonna back off. And then, extending our hand, we're gonna strike at it with magic missile. Again and again. Stuck in the window, struggling to make its way through. We kill the child, and this time, we do feel the guilt. We see it go down. We feel that. Yeah. Alright. Well... We're going to have to move them as well. There's a whole heap of stuff here. Was this kid wearing all of this? Or was this just somewhere else? The tool belt's potentially useful. Binoculars. We could live without them. Yeah, this, this kid was decked out. Alright, well, we're going to put everything into the fire. Moving towards it. We're going to shift all of that in back off in a way. Yep. It's grim business. <sighs> but we're still alive. This is our second day. Done and dusted. We're wanting to go out and explore during the night. Attempting to make it to the Wizard's Tower, but honestly, I think that's going to be better for us to do once we are fully healed. Now, I... Yeah, we don't have any bandages on us at this stage and so i think we're gonna have to make some some proper ones we do have our makeshift ones i would love to have some proper bandages for now they're gonna have to do though so we'll go ahead and wrap them back around we'll just do our torso and our arm i think everything else will probably mend before the morning but then again we have been dealing with dusk for a long time and she heals like wolverine so yeah back downstairs for now though and while it's going to be noisy we are still going to attempt to drag this all the way down here. And we'll go ahead and swap positions with you. Push you down into place. Sitting back on our chair. Let's have a look at having something to eat. Just knock back the bacon for now. The calories are good. Sure. A bit of enjoyment there as well. Some hard cheese. It's not the most uh, quenching of all of our things, but that's okay. A little bit of lemon lime soda to wash everything down. Yeah. Well, Legionnaires, that is where we're going to be wrapping things up for today's episode with Luna. We do have more study to accomplish, but I think we'll be needing to study things outside of just magic. We need better protection. And while we could go roaming around in football armor, that's not going to make us the most nimble person in the world. And I think that's the direction that we're going to want to go with Luna. Dodging more than having, you know, very heavy protection on her. Even so, we have resources around us and we might be able to use them yet. Man, there's still some other books in there. Books that we don't quite understand entirely yet. The Soulbinder's Guide to Necromancy is beyond us. But Geospatial Systems, The Lie of Linearity. That... I think we might be able to learn something else from. 
and so that could be very well worth a try before we go to sleep this evening. A sleep that should be more comfortable now that we have a sleeping bag, but all the same, that image of what she eventually found out was her grandfather stumbling forwards towards her from this beaded curtain. That will stay with her for a long, long time. For now, Luna, you live. Let's keep it that way. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. And because it's been requested, here are the active world mods that I'm using in this series. As you can see, there really isn't that much going on. And with that, for now, I have been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned.